Welcome back to EVO 1. I'm not going to lie to you, today's news isn't fantastic. However, I do have a riddle. What happens whenever you take a bunch of big money investors who have no idea what to do with a bicycle company and you put them in charge? You wind up with one of the world's most renowned brands falling flat, completely going under, and ceasing to exist. All because these investors decided to, well, hit the bed. Let's talk about it. It was early last week whenever rumors began to circulate about Kona and something weird going on. Now, from what I understand, Kona planned to attend Sea Otter. They did show up and start setup, but immediately started to break down and left. Now, a lot of people came out and said, oh, this is signs that they're financially in trouble, something's wrong, but I really don't think anybody hit the nail on the head with this one, especially after the most recent news of them just being done. So in this case, I think that we need to start looking at this from a larger lens and really analyze what actually happened. In the not so distant past, I made a video talking about Kona and their buy one get one free promotion that they were running on their bikes. Now I'll put that video here-ish um, if I can figure out how to do that. And I talked about how this could actually be a good thing for them. Generally with bikes you do have a good amount of margin to play with. so. This was a great way and honestly a brilliant maneuver for them to liquidate old bike inventory so that way they could start making room for some of the new stuff and start to get ahead across the bike industry. Right now, everybody struggles with overstocked inventory, outdated inventory, Trek and Specialized being pretty bad about this right now. But Kona, it seemed like they got rid of a lot of bikes. And I have it on good authority through a few connections that I have that that sale was actually profitable. And so, in my head, whenever I heard that news a little bit ago, I was like, okay, cool. Like they're on the upswing. We probably won't be making any videos about Kona anytime soon. But then this comes out, Kona is done. What? I'm gonna be really honest and level with you here. I don't understand as a business owner myself, how you can go from being profitable to completely going under and being done if things are starting to look better. Now, understandably, they are owned by a big investor, uh, Kent Outdoor, not the same Kent bicycle as you're thinking of that come from Walmart, two separate entities. But in the case of Kent Outdoor, I guess they own a bunch of other companies that are in the outdoor space, if that makes sense. And unfortunately, the people at Kona don't actually control Kona. Now, they might have a say as to we're gonna sticker it up or paint it this way, but as far as you know, opening up the checkbook or spending money or doing anything like that, I really doubt they have much control, especially after they were kind of forced into doing this whole buy one, get one promotion so that they could try to have one, liquidate inventory, and two, get a little bit of money off the books and also knock down a little bit of debt, but it didn't work. As for Kona moving forward, I don't know what the future's gonna hold. We can see a few different scenarios play out, such as a perfect investor coming in, swooping everything up and everything being fine, but it's highly unlikely. Like, if that was gonna happen, that investor probably would have been interested in picking up nukeproof Vitas, Chain Reaction, and Wiggle. But, instead, we saw, yet again, another rich asshole come in and buy the IP, just so he can throw the name on a bike-shaped object. Cool, yeah, that sucks. And then you can also see them just being done, gone, getting sold off for parts, their manufacturing, their logistics, their employees. And I think that's the saddest scenario of them all because yet again, we see another bike brand become the casualty of people who don't deserve their jobs. They truly don't. All these investors care about is their bottom line. They don't give a about the end user. They could care less about quality. And all they do is try to make the most money they possibly can, drive hype, sponsor big YouTube channels, and sell out. And it's sad because it completely erodes any and all trust across the industry. But at this point, what do we do? Every single brand nowadays, except for a few small niche companies, seems to be owned by some rich dead who doesn't care. I know that we're probably gonna see a lot of bikes hit marketplace and things like that, and people are gonna try to get rid of them because just like with Nuke Proof, they're not gonna have a warranty going forward. And that really sucks because all these enthusiasts who were diehard Kona, they're just gonna dump their bikes and 
It's unfortunate. And the big thing here is all of the people who are affected by it. Everybody who was blindsided, just like us, reading this news. They didn't know it was going to happen. They thought they were on the upswing. And so I truly, truly feel for them. And if you could do me a quick favor as a viewer of the channel, if you could comment down below your favorite bike from Kona, your favorite memorable moment, or why they made your riding experience better, just so in the hope that if somebody from Kona that was affected by this sees this video, they know somebody's pulling for them and somebody cares. I'll continue to update the channel as this thing unfolds and as new news comes out. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next video.